we are talking comfort food and filler food. And what I mean by filler food is something that can stretch your food dollar and your hungry kids. <laughs> so today is like any other day around here at our Modern Homestead Revival. We've got kids working, working mowing lawns. Uh, they have a lawn service business. We've got another batch of kids out mountain biking in Ocala. They're all gonna converge here later today, starving to death. So I need a quick meal that's gonna stretch for a bunch of boys that were I'm not gonna be scrounging for food. And one of my all time favorites is Grammy's goulash. Now, I know you've heard of it. It goes by lots of different names, but my mother, Grammy, always called it goulash. And I was raised on it when I was young. Now she says they cooked it because they didn't have a lot of money and they really were trying to stretch their food. And I think it's one of those dishes that uh, if you grew up with it, it's kind of a comfort food because you remember it from childhood. Uh, sometimes those who made it all the time, my mother doesn't even want to see it anymore because <laughs> she says they ate it so much. But I don't have that particular memory. My boys love it. They think it is the best thing in the world when they're starving and they come home and there is goulash and cornbread for supper. They are happy. So I'm just gonna show you my simple ingredients. We're gonna saute some stuff in the pan and throw it all together. I'm gonna make some sourdough cornbread to go with this. Uh, I am got another video going with that recipe, but we'll put it with this as well. Now, I am using grab and go ingredients and everyone can be on their own camp about jarred food, canned food, frozen food, and you do what you want. Uh, I do a mix of all of the above. We do a lot of things from scratch here, but I do keep canned food on hand at all times. Now, we live in Florida, and during hurricane season, we have to be able to have food that we can get to without getting into refrigerators or freezers. So instead of keeping lots of frozen food, I keep the canned food instead. You can get organic, you can do whatever you want. Uh, I buy the best that I can, but then I also take advantage of sales. And I've got enough food stored that we have enough plenty on hand for a month or two. So when I wanna do goulash, I know I have this stuff on hand. I can go grab it and throw it together if we've got a crowd coming over, if a bunch of boys are gonna end up here at the end of the day. I know I can pull this together. So what I need is a box of pasta, whatever kind of pasta you want. I usually keep the elbow macaroni around because that's easy. I am gonna use a can of diced tomatoes. Now, I can double this. So if I end up with more kids, I can throw another can of diced tomatoes in here. I also use a can of beans of some kind. Usually it's pinto beans. Uh, I found some white acre peas in there. I'm gonna use these today and a can of corn. Uh, I have a can of fire roasted corn in here. If I had fresh corn, I'd go ahead and grate that and throw that in there. If I had a bag of frozen corn, I could throw that in there just as easy. It's whatever you have on hand. Now for meat, uh, you could go vegetarian if you wanted. This is a great dish to go vegetarian, doesn't matter. You could add different kind of beans. Some black beans in there would be good. Now we have elk and venison. Those are the only meats we generally eat and that is what stocks my freezer. So we're gonna use ground elk today for our goulash. Now, you know, most households, you all do something different, but Grayson is a hunter and he harvests our meat every year. And so we have one freezer that's full of meat. So it's hard for me to keep a lot of other things frozen in that freezer. I have a side-by-side -side in the kitchen and you guys know side-by-side -side freezers I have to use that for my everyday rotation and different things, breads, all that kind of stuff in there. And this freezer, unless it's the end of season and we're running low on meat, I generally don't have a lot of space in there. So this year we're really eating the elk because Grayson brought home an elk last year. He brought home about 120 pounds and so we're going through that. And I like the ground because I can use it in a lot of different things and I can make that stretch. So with our ground, we mainly will make different kind of ground dishes and I make hamburgers. Now I make the best venison hamburgers you have ever had. 
I'll, you'll have to find that on our website as well. So these are the ingredients. Now I'm gonna saute an onion. If you've got an onion, do an onion, bell pepper, garlic. Saute that up in your pan. This is a one dish meal. Then I'm gonna add my meat. Now, if you're using ground beef, that's a little bit different than wild game because generally wild game has a lot less fat in the meat. So we're not going to have that grease and things in with what we're cooking. It's pretty much very, very lean. <laughs> and there goes the timer for my peaches. <laughs> so wild game is very lean. You're not going to have that added that fat in there with it. So if you like the taste of that, you're going to want to add a little butter in here. You're going to want to add a little oil if you want to something extra for that added fat that you're not gonna get in your wild game. We're pretty much used to it. So I really just add the vegetables uh, and I'll use a little bit of butter when I saute in there and that's pretty much all that we're gonna add. So come on with me back over to the stove. We've got a lot going on over there. We're gonna whip this all up and have it ready for that big gang of boys we have coming on in here later. Another dish I want to share with you super quick about stretching your food that's really hearty and good. If you've got a house full of boys or kids who just love to eat, um, I have a little bit of it right here. And that is cabbage, kale, and sausage. Sometimes it's just cabbage with sausage. Sometimes it's just kale. This particular time I had a little bit of both. Uh, cabbage is super inexpensive. If you can grow it, great. If you can get it at the farmer's market, fabulous. It's super inexpensive and kale can go either way, but I can get a big bag of kale for 99 cents. You can't beat that. Now sausage, whatever sausage you prefer, uh, we'll try to make so our own sausage and then a lot of times I'll buy a real high quality uh, beef sausage as well to have that on hand. And that is a, a quick meal for us. So I do a link of sausage per person and I cut that up real fine. We're gonna steam all of that in one big pot. Uh, and that maybe takes about 45 minutes because cabbage and kale sometimes really need to steam up a little bit. We're gonna add some water to that, a little bit of oil, and a splash of apple cider vinegar to that recipe. I'm also gonna make a batch of cornbread or I might make some biscuits to go along with that. And that's what my grandmother called a filler meal. It's a hearty meal. You've got your vegetables, you got some protein, you got your bread, you've got it all right there. And this meal fills up my kids. Now, some of you might be thinking my kids are not going to eat that. <laughs> but let me tell you, if they're raised young eating it, they're going to. If you're introducing this to them at an older age, you got to go slow. And you might need to add things that they're used to. If they're used to eating mac and cheese, then mix a little bit of mac and, mac and cheese in there or a little cheese sauce. What you want to do if you're introducing a lot of vegetables to kids that have not been eating that, that's what you want to do. Go slow. Do not give them a plate of cabbage and expect them to eat it. So that's a real quick tip and a second recipe for you uh, to think about when you're looking for batch cooking and spreading your meals.
Our goulash is ready. Our pasta is ready. The cornbread is ready. And the hungry boys will be here soon. Now, when I cook the pasta, I do that separately. And I let everyone kind of put the pasta in their bowl. This is what I do to serve it up. We put some pasta in the bowl. Pour the goulash over top. And then I have some sour cream and some cheese I put on top. And we're ready to go. And then we'll get them a slice of cornbread and serve it up kind of buffet style. And then we have the peach cobbler for dessert. So let's see how long it lasts.